What we are going to do is determine the magnetic force between two current carrying wires. But first we have to review what we've learned already. We've learned that a current carrying wire will produce a magnetic field. And the, the magnitude of that magnetic field is found with that equation. B equals the um, permeability constant times the current to the wire divided by 2 pi and the distance that the magnetic field is from that wire. We've also learned that a magnetic force on a current carrying wire uh, will occur when the wire is in a magnetic field. We find that force by multiplying the strength of the magnetic field B times the current in the wire times the length of the wire times the sine of the angle between the magnetic field vector and the current direction. In some cases, as in this example later, the angle theta will be 90 degrees and then sine of 90 is just 1 and that term will drop out. So here we go. Let's figure out the magnetic force between two current carrying wires. We've got wire 1 with current I1 going through it and wire 2 with current I2 going through it. So what we're going to do first of all is determine the force that this wire will apply to wire 1. Current carrying wire produces a magnetic field. To determine the direction of the magnetic field we can use the right hand rule. Point your thumb in the direction of the charges or the current and your curled fingers will indicate the direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is going to curl around the wire like this. It will come out at this point. So wire 2 produces magnetic field B2 right next to this wire um, coming out of the board. Now let's figure out the direction of the force that will be acting on this current, cur current carrying wire in the magnetic field. Again, the right hand rule is used. Place your thumb in the direction of the current, which is to the right. The fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field, which is out of the board, and the palm indicates that the force is being applied downward. This is force 1 being applied on wire 1 by the magnetic field B2 produced by this wire. So the equation for that force applied to this current carrying wire in a magnetic field is F1 equals the magnetic field strength times the current going through the wire times the length of the wire times sine of theta. And as I said before, we're using 90 degrees. We've got uh, current this way, magnetic field out of the board, so sine of 90 is 1. That term will drop out. We're going to actually calculate the um, force per unit length acting on this wire. Let's first assign some numbers to the current and the distance between the wires. So we're going to say that uh, current 1 is 7 amps. We're going to say that current 2 is 12 amps. And the distance between the two is 20 centimeters or 0 0.2 meters. So now we have what we need to find the value of that uh, force acting on wire 1. We're going to find the force per length, per unit length. So we're going to bring the L, the length, over to this side of the equation and write it this way. So force 1 per unit length in meters equals uh, B2 times I1 times 1. 
Now, we're going to substitute uh, a value for B2 based on the information that we have. So from the, the first equation that we reviewed, we know that B2, the magnetic field produced by this current carrying wire, is equal to this. So let's put those values in here. And R is the distance between the wire and the location, the magnetic field, magnetic field that we're, we're measuring. So that distance is 0 0.2 meters. So this is term B2, using the terms that we're given. We also need I1, and we've already shifted L to this side. So if we put the numbers in place, we can then calculate the, mag the um, magnitude of that force 1. The permeability constant is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. The units are uh, a little different. They are uh, Tesla meters per amps. So that's this term. I2 is given as 12 amps. Divide that by 2 pi times the uh, distance between the field, location, and, the, and wire 2, and then multiply the whole thing by current 1, which is 7 amps. So if you go through all the math, what's going to happen is this will cancel, that will cancel, uh, the meters will cancel, and it turns out a Tesla is actually um, equal to a Newton per amp meter. So that amp will cancel again, and you'll be left with an answer in newtons per meter, which corresponds to force per distance, per length. And it's going to be 8.4, when you do all the math, times 10 to the minus fifth newtons per meter. Okay, so that's the value of the force on wire 1 from this magnetic field per length. Now if you went back to figure out the force on wire 2 from wire 1, it would be in this direction. There's some, an attraction going on. And that force will have the same numbers applied to it to calculate the value. And you'll just be switching I1 and I2, and you'll end up getting the same value. So equal. Uh, magnitude and forces opposite direction, they attract each other. So when two current carrying wires have the current in the same direction, they attract. And actually, if the currents were in the opposite directions, they'd repel each other. 